Commissioners uh, Commission. I want to welcome Linda Malone to the commission. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, Linda. Yes. And I don't see your picture anymore, but. Oh, I'm still on mine, but. Okay. No, I can see you. I can see, I can see all you. Okay, there you are. Um, I want to uh, welcome Linda to the commission and just so that even by audio, Gail and Lou can get our voices. If everyone would say their name and introduce yourself around. I'm Becky Hawley. I'm Marsha Morrow. Pamela Smithstead. Yeah. Linda Malone. I'm Lou Senek. Where's Lou? I'm here. Lou, this is Lou Senek. Okay. And we also have Tyler Deems, who is our regular liaison. He's the finance officer for Sandy. And Jeff, I want to. I would like you to say your last name so that I say it right. <laughs> Aprati. My name is Jeff Aprati, and I'm Aprati. the city recorder. Yep. Excellent. And he's um, helping us um, along with Tyler. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start our workshop. And for those who don't know, we do a workshop our work session before our regular meeting because we don't have to follow Robert's rules of order because we're really not very good at it. So when it comes to voting on things, we'll save that for our regular meeting. And we're going to do some um, updating right now. So first on the agenda is the art master plan discussion. And one of the reasons we had the recent public art forum and I put questions on Facebook is so that we can get feedback from the public on what they would like to see for Art and Sandy. And uh, so that information along with what we gather in the future will help us define a uh, master art plan. And I believe Gail was involved and aware of a an art master plan in the community she was working in. And so we've also had discussions on not necessarily 1% for art, but that concept of getting some city funding uh, put aside for seed money for our art projects. We had so. something. We had something like that at one time, Becky. Um, it was only for public works projects for actual um, construction done by the city of Sandy. But we had a one percent for the arts from from projects. I mean, I'm talking twenty years ago, fifteen years ago. I don't know if it got uh, knocked off after I left, or if they didn't continue, or someone didn't carry the thread forward. I think Carl was trying to find where that was actually in the, um, you know, in the city's history. But I know we had it. Uh, we had it when we built the um, uh, police station. Well, and also the bus, uh, the bus transit place. We had mm -hmm. it there because we, we bought artwork for that trans center out of that 1% for the arts. So. Okay, so that was uh, probably a council decision, but it was never codified. It's not in the code anywhere that anybody can find. Yeah, that's so what Carl something said. that they decided to do for those projects. And so what we're talking about researching is how we could put that directly into the code so that it isn't necessarily negotiated for each individual project, no, just period, but it's, it's a known it. upfront. Um, right. Thing. And maybe on a big project, it would be a small percent, part of, a, say, half a percent or a quarter of a percent on $60 million. But on a smaller building, maybe it would be 1% or whatever. It's a discussion that we want to have. And I thought it might be a good idea if um, moving forward that we uh, talk about it in some of our discussions. Um, so the next thing that ties into that is it says art committees. 
We have several art committees working right now. I want to go over what they are for Linda's um, information and Gail's information, also for um, Jeff. So we have a public relations committee, which exists now. It's Marsha, Sandra, and I. And we're working on the Cook rededication um, celebration which has been moved once and may be moved again, but right now it's scheduled for the 30th of May. We have, uh, we intend to do a fundraiser uh, private event, uh, which also is being pushed forward. And was there anything else? No, I think that's, that's all that we're working on right now. And um, Sandra is the head of that, um, committee at this point. Um, then we have uh, the chalk art uh, event that we did last year. And Sandra, Pam and I worked on that. But um, Carl told me that the original idea for that actually came from Linda. Is that correct? Correct. 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 I sent him a link to it. Some yeah. information on that. Yeah. So as we move forward, we can only have three commissioners on a committee, but we can have as many volunteers as we need, want, or who would like to be involved on these committees. So um, I was going to see if perhaps Linda might be interested this moving forward to take Sandra's place on that particular committee, if Sandra is good with that. Um, we're not, uh, Pam and I talked it over and because of the way things are so uncertain and there's so much planning that goes on to put that event on, we don't think we can pull that off this year. Uh, not but with we, the mountain festival is canceled. I don't think we're gonna do anything major until after mid-July. So, Probably um, we would be start planning this year for the, the next uh, the next one. I agree. Uh, like for instance, getting grants, you have to start that a year in advance because of the grant the grant cycles and when you have to write your report and your you know final report and everything. So actually now is a good time to get that committee together and look at the next year's event. Correct. Another um, project that we have going on is we have an art inventory. And Lou went out and took pictures, photos of everything that he could think of and that he was given information on uh, that was um, art inventory, public art, things that we're starting with the things that city of Sandy owns or is public accessible, like the Roger Cook mural, which is privately owned. It's on a private building, but it's obviously enjoyed by everyone. And then Tyler set up a calendar for us. And I would love to find a volunteer to work with um, Lou and uh, someone who can take the information that's already been gathered about individual pieces of art and input it into the spreadsheet and then get loose photographs onto each individual item. And with a view, not only to have an art inventory um, just for the sake of having a, something to do, but that could be used as um, a way of of doing, say, a walking tour in the future so that we have good information on, on each piece of art. And also, uh, in the case of the murals, for instance, we know what materials are used, we know when they're restored, when they need to be re-looked at, how much money it's going to cost in the future, and we can budget for it. So there's another opportunity for a volunteer uh, or another commissioner to work on art inventory. And um, 
for all of our projects and everything we do, we're looking for a uh, grant writer. So, um, so Linda, would you be interested in working on the chalk art team? Sure. Yeah, I would like to do that. Okay. And then uh, the master plan. I'd like to um, talk to individuals uh, in just by phone or just to visit with you in the next little while to um, see who's interested in doing that. Just since we can't really get together for coffee, we'll have coffee and just visit. Okay. Um, Becky, I think um, in talking with Gail previously, I think Gail has some valuable input on that subject. Mm -hmm. So we want to be sure and include Gail in that discussion. We'll be sure and do that. Um, let's see. So also, um, I really want to have kind of a, a visit with uh, Linda as a new person. You know, I'd like to get to know you better and see where your interests lie and that kind of thing. And we can, we can okay. talk about yeah. what great. it is. Okay. And I, the reason I put my phone number on an email to you is because you don't want me calling you like when I feel like it at six in the morning, because that's when I'm not doing anything else. So <laughs> it's better if you call me. Yeah. I don't normally get up before 7.30 or 8. Right. I mean, I'm awake before that, but I don't actually. Um, about 7 o'clock is when the automatic coffee maker starts brewing, and that's when I get up. <laughs> Well, my coffee. So um, anyway, and anytime anybody wants to visit with me, they're welcome to call me at home. But I'm usually not too alert after eight o'clock at night. I'm gonna say I've been I've been retired for five years, well, almost six years now, and I used to get up at five o'clock every morning for work as a letter carrier. But um, I, I quickly fell out of that habit after I retired. <laughs> within within okay. six months, I wasn't getting up at five o'clock anymore. <laughs> yeah, especially in the winter. <laughs> okay, does anyone have any other things they want to add to uh, our work session? Um, anything that's been on your mind or anything you want to talk about? Well, I don't know if this is the place for an idea that has been going through my mind since this whole isolation thing started. And um, so it's a, basically a project for, uh, um, for maybe a future thing that we could be gathering information for now. Um, for lack of a better title, I would say it's called a, a sign of the times. And I would like to get some sort of um, documentary proof in, in the way of pictures um, or photographs of things that are currently changing in Sandy during this um, uh, isolation, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. The things like um, a sign on Joe's Donuts, only three people allowed in the store at a time, or the lines spaced every six feet outside of uh, Ace Hardware and other buildings in town. Um, yesterday, I started, I got my first takeout order from the library. They have a thing now that if you have stuff on hold, they'll call you and you go down and pick it up and it has a little brochure on top of it, look like a Chinese takeout picture saying you know your first Chinese take or your first book takeout from Sandy and those are things that maybe you know we're it's going to live with us for a while but in 10 years from now there may be people who you know would like to see what the effect was on Sandy when we went through this through well, those I, I, signs. I think that's a good idea and actually a year ago this month I think it was on the 28th or 29th of April uh, Thea Ellen at the library, she's library assistant, is into photography. She put together 24 hours in Sandy. And so um, one of the things that we could do is maybe uh, work a little bit with her about doing a kind of a, uh, a snapshot of what's what this time period is like because what goes on today is tomorrow's history. Yeah. And I think, I think you're right. It probably I was would thinking be interesting. Another good idea would be to solicit um, input from the community, from the public, get them involved by saying, show, you know, 
take a picture of something that you found very um, uh, life changing or altering during this whole process, something that you observed or saw that that um, you think brings home the whole massive change that we're going through. I think, I think that's this is a, an excellent idea. I think it's an excellent idea and, and Lou being a photographer, I imagine he'd be on board with that too. So yeah. I'm I'm going to go ahead and, and it will be put that. together pretty quickly, I would think. Yeah. And you know, it can be there's lots of ways to get it out to where people, I'm, I'm sure there are people out there taking pictures. My husband and I have stopped a few times and said, oh, can you believe that? Or like the, you know, just the road sign on the highway, instead of saying snow up ahead or chains required, it just says stay safe. Um, there's probably 20 billboards in town that say stay safe. Um, I think uh, discussing a way to get the word out to the public on that rather quickly would be good. Yeah, I think um, so too. You know, Sandy Post, but where else could you put it where people could see the request for photos? Uh, the neighborhood, neighborhood Association? Yeah, um, I would think that'd be good. Facebook? Yeah. Well, people are still on Facebook, so. Well, thanks, thanks so much for the idea, Linda, and I think it'd be a good thing to follow up on, especially right now. It's something that people can do from home, and it'll keep, um, if we put it out, from the Sandy Arts Commission. It'll keep the Sandy Arts Commission, give us some visibility, notoriety, but keep our, what we're doing in the, in the community alive. Okay, so I think um, that I'm looking at a 6.30 start time. So I'm gonna interpret that to mean that our regular meeting would start at 1.30. To be 130. Apologize for that. Yeah. That's, okay. That's my fault. You don't need to apologize, Jeff. I changed it on the heading, but not in the body of the agenda. So <laughs> not a problem for us, right? Um, but Becky, I think there was one other item on the agenda for the workshop. Um, a the welcome packet. Welcome packet flyers. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to touch on that? Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. I had so many notes that I skipped over that. Um, Okay, so Sandy now has a welcome packet. I don't recall the name of it specifically, but it is something that the chamber and the city are putting together for new um, residents. It's like kind of a welcome wagon. We've had that for over 20 years, but maybe they're changing it or yeah. re revamping it. It went by the way, but now it's back again. Cool. And um, I would like to see the Sandy Arts Commission put out something in the welcome packet of just a small handout. Um, and it could be something that we have to talk about how we want it structured. But for instance, our mission is to support arts, arts in our community. So, um, we have a lot of uh, things that we could uh, put in like um, art opportunities in our community. Uh, if people want to send us, um, okay, just off the top of my head, Lori Ryland has a studio. There's someone we could, we could list her information on it. <laughs> Um, the Sandy Actors Theater information, the Wolfpack information. You know, I, I lived in Sandy from 1976 until I retired in 2005, and I didn't know there was a live theater in town. Oh, no. I saw the thing as I was, you know, blinders driving through town, and I saw the ACE sign, and I saw something about a theater, and I thought in my head, must be a funky old bowling alley. <laughs> theater or something, you know, I have no idea, but I had no time to even think about it. And someone said, I think you'd really enjoy Crazy and a Half. It's a new play at the theater. And I said, what? And so they told me, oh, it's their Ace Hardware. You've seen the sign. I go, oh, okay. So I walk into Ace Hardware and ask to buy a ticket. And they started <laughs> laughing and I, I couldn't figure out because I thought it was back there behind plumbing, you know? <laughs> and they said, no, no, you go out to the parking lot and then it's out there. 
And I went out and I, I looked literally all over the parking lot and couldn't see a theater. And finally, I started walking the perimeter and I found a one foot by one foot sign that said on white, black letters on white that said Sandy Actors Theater. That's how big their sign was. And it looked like a 7-Eleven door, you know, double door. And I thought, well, that's just crazy. How do they stay open? So um, I enjoyed the, enjoyed the play and it, they handed out a little flyer that said um, volunteer. And so I filled out all the information to volunteer and I started painting the signs and just having a sign out front that uh, was big enough for a passing car to read and was more interesting, they doubled their attendance in the first play. So if we work You're together as a community yeah. to support the local arts, sure. not just visual arts, but all the arts, um, then we're stronger together. I agree. So this welcome packet is going to require a little research, a little bit of um, reaching out to individuals and working with the city liaisons and staff to find out what we can do. Because I've asked this question for months and never had a definitive answer. And that is, can we put uh, these people, even if they're not nonprofits, but get put it out and, and say, send us your information and we'll put it on a flyer. Or send us your flyers and we'll hand them out at um, if other events. I mean, there's ways of supporting the arts that I think we need to research and do. So that's another mm, volunteer or commissioner or kind of a well, job that we're, we'd love to be able to put together. If the welcome packet is to be a service to new people coming into town to show them what's available here, I would think there wouldn't be a problem with putting if the Sandy Actors Theater has a pamphlet, putting that flyer in the pamphlet. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be all, all city generated and city city centric stuff. Right. You know, and, and they're, all, they're also pay for stuff, but it's, it's a service, not necessarily to the person producing the art, but to the citizen moving here to see what, what all is available for them in the way of entertainment and art and services. Hey, Becky. Um, remember we were talking about this for Y East Artisans Guild and we had to be a member of the chamber in order to put anything in. Is that uh -huh. still the case? Well, Sandy Actors Theater, I believe was, I don't know if they still are, but they were a chamber member. So right. they could put things in without a yeah. problem. And then the guild only raises about $350 a year on dues and the uh, chamber fee was 125 right so we really couldn't afford to continue with the chamber so um it's well, and lori the other person lori ryland is her name she probably i don't know if she's a member well if she's a member she can put her stuff but in. i mean is but that a guild a guild for instance we could put why east artisans guild which is a non-profit um here's their information you might like to um okay I realize, I realize that the chamber is partly behind this packet and regenerating something that the city used to produce on their own, but who actually pays for the production of the packet and for the information inside it? I don't think the chamber can dictate who can go in there and has to be a chamber member if they're not, if they're not uh, financially supporting the packet, if their name the is city, just on it. So the city is not currently doing um, anything with that packet other than providing addresses for the new chamber to give them to the yeah. chamber is taking care of the entire project at this point and they've got some grant funding from Clackamas County to help assist with those costs um, so right now that really the city is not yeah uh, uh, we're affiliated in the sense that we provide information but right. we are not the, well what we what we used to do with the packets um, and like I say this is back in my terms uh, whenever anybody came in and signed up for either water or for uh, like Sandy Net, they got mm -hmm. a packet. They got a welcome packet that the city produced that gave them all the information on trash collection and 
you know, parks yep. situation, a list of all the parks in town, um, shopping, restaurants, um, but that was produced by the city and not by the chamber. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, we've had, uh, as you're all aware, the number of residents moving in and out has increased dramatically. Um, An internal, you know, staff time has just changed. So that was a project that was not necessarily um, at the top of the the list for the administrative department to keep getting out. Um, it unfortunately, fell by the wayside, and fortunately, the chamber had the capacity to pick it up, which is great. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so we're happy to see it uh, oh. alive again. Okay, so, but if they're getting Clackamas County funding, they've got to have some parameters of what they're including besides chamber members. Right. So I think as a city function that we probably should be able to include something in it, just like parks would, wouldn't we? I would assume so. I think your best, um, you know, channel right now would be talk to Chris Jones at the chamber and find out what parameters, um, if she's aware of any. Um, I think you know, I have not. On, go ahead, Tyler, okay. sorry. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I was just gonna say, based on my conversations with, with Chris, I think she'd be supportive. Um, she seems very open to the city providing content. Yeah, I think the historical concern that we had when the city was doing this, um, was we didn't want to just publish, oh, here's, you know, two things without getting a large group, right? You don't want to say, here's two plumbers in town when there's seven plumbers in town and now you've endorsed right. you sure. not mentioned the other five. And so that was the initial concern with, um, you know, who was getting and who was getting included in the, in the we'd be, welcome. We'd be lucky to have two plumbers in town. Well, <laughs> maybe a bad example, but <laughs> yeah. I think you get the idea that we wanted to make sure we were including everyone who right, wanted to include it and not, um, you know, uh, unexpectedly, um, you know, leaving people out. Yeah, and, and the, I used to take flyers for the Sandy Actors Theater down and they would put them in the outgoing bill, first bill, or however they were doing it. So anyway, so that's what that subject is, is I feel like not just for that welcome packet, but um, the longest day celebration in um, that the city puts on in June, which I don't know that they'll do this year, but for the following year, I feel that the Sandy Arts Commission should be represented in some way. And so having some materials to pass out would be a good thing for that as well. I agree. So we have not officially canceled that yet, but I think that um, it is definitely headed that direction given our current well, situation so that we find ourselves in. The the uh, festival, Mountain Fest, was canceled, and that's after that. And so I got to thinking, although when I've looked at pictures, I've seen uh, it looks like things are really tight. It could be done in a less tight way and maybe conform to a social distancing platform if you wanted to have it and just organize it differently. Just depends, you know, here's what I'm struggling with. You, you plan things and you plan things and then it gets postponed, isn't gonna happen and whatever. And it's a lot of work to do, <laughs> all the planning. It's, it's like, I feel like I just don't wanna plan anything because it's so much work and then it gets postponed or canceled. So, mm -hmm. Um, Pam and I had talked about just doing um, an impromptu chalk art thing without um, making a big deal out of it. And the other day I saw on Facebook where one of the, uh, um, I think she is either a city employee or a library employee, went out at the end of her driveway and drew some balloons and the the blooms say something about being uplifting and whatever it was a nice message and it was a fun project and you're not destroying anything it's not 
it's just chalk. And so we might start a, you know, continue to promote something that was chalk art at a social distance and just bringing the community together to do something fun without being shoulder to shoulder. So we might do that. I agree. I was hoping that our high school would do graduation like they're doing in David Douglas, where they sit in their cars and um, they have a loudspeaker and your car drives by and they hand you your, your <laughs> diploma. They're doing a drive-by graduation ceremony at David Douglas. Wow. So the kids don't miss out on graduation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I see, uh, we don't have enough land for it, but I see drive-in theaters coming back, uh, you know, where people can, <laughs> Uh, can self distance in their cars, but uh, I would think there could be a way to do the sidewalk chalk thing with a six foot, you know, social separation. Um, it's very likely we could, but we should have started planning that, uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you never know what the parameters well, are. You, you be just now. keep ho you keep hoping for a certainty for some time to be okay. Now for certain. Science and medicine says we can get back to normal by X date. Uh, we're not there yet. No, and normal isn't going to be for a while yet. Um, no. Just speaking for myself, not pointing fingers at any of you, but uh, I'm in the age category and the uh, I have autoimmune problems and um, I have my mother living here full-time now she's 88 so i am being more cautious because of that if i were um, a 25 year old right now yeah i'd have a life uh, i don't know i, I just I wouldn't be visiting my grandmother yeah you know I call her on the phone <laughs> I've got so anyway, diabetes and my husband has chemo. So yeah, we're not, we're not uh, heading out too often either. Anyway, um, so, uh, okay. So I'm gonna call the meeting, regular meeting to order. Uh, if no one has anything else to add. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, we're gonna skip the pledge uh, today, if you don't mind. Not a problem. If I stand up, uh, all you'll see is my belly button. Um, okay. <laughs> do we have any changes to the agenda? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, public comment. Um, Gail, would you like to take a few minutes just to tell us a little bit about yourself and 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 um, what your interests are and so and on? With, since you're good to the community. What's Gail's last name? Gail, can you spell your last name? Name and address. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E. <clears throat> and uh, my address is 35750 Southeast Colorado Road. I've lived here for about four and a half years. Uh, my kids live in Estacada, so, you know. <laughs> Uh, and they moved here before me, so I moved to be closer to my grandchildren. Prior to that, I was a resident, a longtime resident of a small community near uh, Des Moines, and I served on an arts council uh, that, and, and part of what I did was write grants, got a couple grants for the organization, and professionally, uh, I'm an, an actuary, which is a person who works on insurance products. So uh, I was involved professionally in a lot of strategic planning. Um, Pam and I think Becky were working on the mural and I started up a conversation with Pam and kind of expressed an interest in potentially working with the Arts Commission and uh, um, anyway, that's kind of how I got connected with your organization. Uh, when I, in terms of writing grants, you generally have to have, um, you know, it, it, usually you ask for about half of what the project costs. And 
And a lot of times with grants, they don't want to, uh, um, you know, pay for people's salaries and so forth. They actually kind of want it to go towards directly towards the project and so forth. Um, I, I, I was also familiar with uh, master plans that have been put out by cities. And you, you can just Google that. And, you know, all sorts of communities have master plans. You know, they have mission statements. There's all sorts of different kinds of content. And, and a lot of times, um, you know, even even little, little, relatively small towns in, in Oregon have a lot of master plans. And they'll hire consultants to develop master plans with the organization. I kind of felt if you're going to do if you want to write a lot of grants, you've got to have a pretty secure source of funding, and it's very helpful to have a big plan. And I, I guess, you know, as a start, you can simply research all the different types of, all the plans out there. They're somewhat similar, but some are far more detailed than others, and, and figure out what subject matters within the plan you want to start working on. And you had mentioned earlier about your your arts inventory within the city, mm -hmm. and uh, that's usually part of a master plan because you're going to have a plan for how you're going to maintain that and a schedule and so forth and funding for that. Uh, so anyway, I thought that would be useful for your organization. And then also, just from listening to you so far, uh, you have you guys have lots of terrific ideas. And um, like any organization, their ideas are cheap. <laughs> Getting the ideas executed are, is something else. And, and if you have a plan, you really know what you want to execute. And because you've taken the time to develop a plan and, and, and then you're more into doing the execution and instead of just throwing out tons of ideas. But just, just the thought in terms of how I could potentially help. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Gail, and, and we'll be in touch um, as much as we can be. Uh, we'll visit and see how we can get you involved. Okay. okay good. So, great. So, um, Lou, did you have anything to bring up today? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, Sandra? Did you have anything to bring up that you haven't? No, um, just going back and forth on the dates. And like you said, do we just cancel everything till next year or wait until fall and see if there's a way to do one of the events? Or I don't know, I'm confused about what to do. Well, I know. Like everybody um, else. Our old business is Roger Cook's mural rededication, the budget. And she's, uh, Sandra is the uh, head of that committee right now. And because we don't know if it's going to go forward, we don't know if it's going to be able to include um, an indoor event or if we do it, if it would be a socially distanced only outdoor event because we were going to do it in two parts originally. Originally, we were going to have in AEC, in their atrium, a small semi-private event where we would invite the city council and Roger's family and close friends for um, a short reception and then at four o'clock go out and do the formal rededication and snap the cover off of the beautiful bronze plaque that um, Ernie Bracci uh, donated. And um, so not knowing exactly it, what this event is going to constitute, we still need a budget whether we spend it or not. So I think right now we should discuss a dollar figure like Let's say we were able to have the um, indoor event uh, and the outdoor event. Just knowing what we've spent on other things, Sandra, do you have an opinion as to what we should just 
use as an outside top figure? What did we wind up with as the final on the open houses? Do you remember? I still haven't turned in my $90 bill to whoever. Um, Tyler. The Tyler? Is it? Oh, I give it to Tyler. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, you can submit that to me or anyone at City Hall and we'll get you reimbursed. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I believe we had it up to 300, but it wasn't that much. Yeah, we didn't spend. I don't that. have it. Why don't we now? Yeah, we didn't spend that much. No. Why don't we just put, um, why don't we make a request for a $300 budget? If we don't spend it, that's fine. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, um, would sounds someone good. like to? Sounds very reasonable. I would move that we do put that three hundred dollars uh, as a suggested budget at this time. Uh, whether you know, if Tyler said we submit that to the city as a as a proposed budget for the uh, the rededication. Thank you, Linda. Second. I Some second Linda. that. Who was that? Marcia. Okay. Uh, all in favor, uh, raise your hand at me. <laughs> Becky, I would, I would recommend that since we're online, it's probably a good idea to, to just do a roll call vote. Okay. Just... <laughs> Why don't you do the roll call vote? I can take care of that. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. I'm, uh, I was trying to say that, but I was on mute and not able to unmute myself before you beat me quick. So. <laughs> we'll do a roll call vote. Um, and I'm trying to visualize how everyone sits there at the dais. Uh, Commissioner Senek. Oh, I did raise my hand, but I'll say yes. Oh. <laughs> Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner Morrow. Yes. Commissioner Smithstead. Yes. Commissioner Malone. Yes. And Commissioner Holly. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay, so at this point, we are still on for the two events on May 30th. I need to make a final decision after we hear maybe just a little bit more about what's going on with the city and the state and so on. But I have uh, things into the, um, the Hood View News, and they're a monthly publication, which means we need to have a, a decision pretty soon or else I will um, need to cancel that. Is there a way to put a disclaimer on the announcement saying subject to change based on um, uh, decisions at the state level? There's yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know. it's almost like, where would you send people for that answer even? To, uh, City. To city, city of Sandy. Yeah, the city of Sandy. Uh, whether the city of Sandy has open doors or not? No, they're not going to have open doors. It would, it could go on their website if it's no, the website. It would no, be. No. It, yeah. It would be on the event and then listed as canceled, wouldn't it? So just say okay. check, city, check city website. Subject to cancellation, check city website before you attend, or you know something like that. Uh, and the other thing, too, is Mr. Picking is allowing us to use the west side of his entire parking lot there, and you can see the mural from most of the whole strip of parking. So I don't think it's going to be a big um, 150 people attended thing, and you could socially distance on that whole side of the street and in I front agree. of the <laughs> and just have the outdoor portion of it. You're going to have a sound system. The city has a portable sound system. So you could say, you know, please respect people's um, space and social distance. We want to do this dedication. But in order to do it safely, we need to keep our, our six foot okay. social distance. Can so we'll, we'll move along and we'll think about that and we'll see how things transpire. And I think that's no, Hello. Hello. Becky, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. 
I something I saw yesterday at Cannabis Nation, if you know where that is, <laughs> in Gresham. Anyway, in the, in North of the 66, they have these 12 inch circles or eight inch circles that are green, that's a six foot. And they're placed every six foot within the store for the line. And that might be a kind of fun thing to do, depending on when we do it, how many to have in the parking lot, at least to give an idea for people. Pull right. that parking lot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And also, and also, families who live together can stand together, and that doesn't take up all that much space when you have, say, a family of four all standing together, and then you space out another group. So, mm -hmm. we'll think about how we we're going to do that. Okay. You might, so, you our might word it. You might word it in the announcement saying "subject to social distancing requirements," so people are prepared for that, and they know that that's in place if it's still in place. Good idea, Pam. Mm -hmm. So I might be sending some more information to the paper to include in the article. Uh, and my other feedback on that would be, and I can reach out to Councillor Exner if you'd like me to, Becky, or you can, um, but maybe we can take the pulse of the council at Monday's meeting on um, events, because currently my understanding, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, is that council has canceled all non-essential events and meetings um, in, you know, public, um, in the public. So, you know, even if it is a socially distanced um, mm. event, I'm not sure if council at this point in time will support that given mm. the, you know, yeah. advice hey. from the right now. So, yeah, hey, Tyler, you can pass on uh, to the, to the, to Carl or someone on the council. Um, at this time, we can't get a whole lot of public input on development and things that are going on in the city, but yet they seem to be going full bore ahead and, and just telling the public, oh, you can, you can uh, log on to Zoom and give us some input. That does not seem like a, a, the way to go right now. It makes it seem like the developers are in charge of what's happening in the city and the citizens basically have to take a back seat. So if you could pass yeah, that Carl. message on. Okay. I would be happy to pass that message on, but I Thank think that you, message Tyler. also needs to go to the governor so she can stop the 120 day clocks on development application yeah. uh, right. with state law, not our council's decision. Right. right. Thanks for that clarification, Tyler. Yeah. That was very helpful. Okay. <laughs> so I want to move on to the next item, which is art fundraiser budget. I don't believe at this point that we will be doing anything with this until June or July, but just in case something opens up and just in case we can get creative, um, we need to be thinking ahead to that. And once we, uh, we will have actually the May meeting to discuss the parameters uh, to that and the budget. So I want to delay the discussion on this art fundraiser budget to the May meeting. Good idea. Yeah, agreed. I will carry it over to the May meeting. Okay. Um, the Arts Commission bylaws, which what took us three months to iron <laughs> out, um, got, I don't know, lost in the wind somehow. And so we're going to start over. And um, Tyler sent a copy with the agenda. So if you have it printed out, uh, get that in front of you. I read through it. Okay. And, um, so I want to just go through it paragraph by paragraph, if we could. And um, I went through my 2018 notes of when we made changes in, to the original. Mm -hmm. So Marcia, did you um, have a chance to take a second? 
Yes. Uh, I was just a cat throwing up in my computer chair over there. Nothing for you to nothing to alarm you, I hope. Okay. So Becky, are your comments the ones that are in red on the um, bylaws? I don't know whose red comments these so are. Those red comments are the that's just track changes for all okay. changes that were made from the um, most Great. recent draft that I had. Some of okay. these were comments that Commissioner Senek had submitted. Uh, via email to Becky, um, okay. which I took, and then other items I took the liberty to um, update as I was going through it because it was either repetitive, redundant, or sure. contradictory. So I tried to do some cleanup. And it still is. So, um, okay, so I'm just going to jump down uh, and start with Article 1, looks good to me. Article 2, looks good to me. That's the um, uh -huh. City Council's directive to us. That's our purpose. Yes. And then we got to mission. Pam, have you had a chance to read the mission? No, That's because I couldn't get into I I couldn't get into the uh, site. Okay. So this is the original mission in the original bylaws that were submitted to us, and then we rewrote the mission statement. Right. I personally don't object to the mission statement that's on here with the exception that I would strike in the last bullet, um, raise the appreciation for and the understanding of the visual arts. I would strike visual because I feel that the arts is, period. Yeah. The arts period. Yep. Right. So um, let me read the mission statement out loud for those who are not reading it. The way it's written here. The mission of the City of Sandy Arts Commission is to provide and encourage the formation and the growth of public programs which will afford greater opportunities to experience and enjoy the fine and performing arts locally while adding value to the city of Sandy's economic value. There is no punctuation in that sentence how about whatsoever. This, uh, so not, how about I think it needs economics and cut up the second value? You've got too many values in there. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, you can just say adding to the city of Sandy. You don't need value. Adding to the city of Sandy's economics and cut off the last value. Yeah. Just pluralize economics. Or you could cut out the first value. That works. Yeah, well. I think I would vote to uh, cut out the first one. Let me reread that with okay. taking out the first one. Enjoy the fine and performing arts locally while adding to the city of Sandy's economic value. Right. I think that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so I am going to suggest that the way we handle the vote on this is we will do what we just did, make a couple suggestions, and then I'm going to make a statement and reread it the way we are accepting it. And then at the end, check me if I'm wrong about this, Tyler. At the end, whoever does the minutes and whoever makes the motion then could make the motion to read to accept all of the corrections as stated during the discussion. As read by the chair. As read by the chair. Would that work for you, Tyler? You can adopt the bylaws as amended or as discussed um, okay. by the chair. I'm actually okay. making these changes as you guys are discussing right now. So um, we should have a clean okay. by the end. Great. Okay, so we just took the one value out and closed off visual. Now let me read the second uh, bullet. Promote the growth of arts and culture as a vital interest for the for a prosperous and livable community. Is it, asset? Is it asset or interest? Yeah, just a minute. I, I read did a bad job of reading. Promote the growth of arts and culture as a vital asset for prosperous and livable community as for a, for a prosperous, prosperous and livable community. I think that reads okay. Did anybody, yeah. other than my bad reading? 
I think it's okay. fine. The last bullet is raise the appreciation for and the understanding of the arts among people of diverse backgrounds and provide access to art exhibits for residents and visitors to the community. Sound good? Yeah. Sounds good. Art. Anyone? Okay. Art exhibits seems like a narrow piece of what we are promoting. I mean, we aren't just promoting art exhibits. How about art just without off exhibits? Art exhibits? Yeah. yeah, I think if you, if you take out exhibits, I think that makes a lot better sense. Yeah, uh, yes, that, that would work. And okay. I still have I still have one more correction in the first bullet, if I can go back before you move okay. on. Okay, experience and enjoy the fine art and performing arts locally. Um, you could eliminate the word the and it reads better. Enjoy fine arts. Enjoy fine and performing arts locally. Okay. Strike yeah. the. Strike the before yeah. fine. Agreed. And re, re and Tyler, can you look that over for punctuation? Because there that is just a huge run on. Run on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Break it up. <laughs> okay. Um. So now we have. Uh, we did the strike on exhibits for the last bullet point there. I think, I think we're good to go on that. Article three looked good to me with the change that was noted qualified applicants. The next paragraph, initial start of the commission. Um, I'm going to read the whole thing here just for Gail and um, Linda's understanding. Three of the seven initial members of the commission shall serve two years and until their successors are appointed and confirmed in order to achieve staggered terms of office. All subsequent appointments shall be for four years or for the duration of an unexpired term in the case of an appointment to a vacancy. So for Linda, Linda, you're taking the place of a commissioner who was a two-year commissioner, and that uh, will end this fall winter. And then Pam and I were the other two two-year commissioners. I and I've suggested that I'm willing to um, put my two-year position up for the next applicant and apply for the four-year position because I think that's all the energy I have left. <laughs> Carl. Exner and Tyler thought that that was a good idea because that would give us a little more continuity. And then the new person coming in would have a good background on getting to know the commission for a few months. And um, then they can reapply for a four-year commission as, as Linda will be able to reapply for a four-year. I thought when I saw my uh, notification that it ran, ran through um the fall of 2021 not the fall of 2020 because it's on the website incorrectly oh, okay it so has all of us the, there's well it has all go ahead explain that yeah so there's a little bit more background to this um when the arts commission was initially formed in i believe september of 2018 mm -hmm. october of 2018 one of those two months um, all the appointments, the the interview panel that consisted of council members, um, you know, voted and approved in a workshop who they would like to appoint. However, those appointments never formally went to the whole governing body as a whole in a regularly scheduled council meeting. Um, so we're operating under the, the assumption currently that the intent was to appoint the various commissioners to two or four year um, terms. 
In addition to that, Jeff is working on updating term dates for all of our boards and commissions so that they fall in a more calendar-like schedule instead of some in June, some in October, <laughs> some in December. Um, and so we're, we're doing a comprehensive update to all of our boards and commissions, um, not you know intending to change anyone's um, term significantly, but just extending some of those out to a calendar date. So everyone's- Make it more uniform. Exactly, we'd like to open up, are you interested in serving for the city of Sandy in any capacity on a board or commission? Great, let's send out that recruitment notice in you know September or October for a December 31st term that ends appointment first council meeting in January. So uh, we'll be doing some cleanup as the months come on. Part of this was in the report that I was gonna give more towards the end of the meeting, but it, it nicely <laughs> Uh, meshed with where we're at in the bylaw discussion. So, cool. so how does that affect our current appointments title? So anyone that had a term expiring this year in October is going to be extended to December 31st, 2020. Um, should council approve that, which Jeff and I don't believe there would be any reason why they wouldn't. Uh, and then at that point we would you know, if you're interested in reserving, um, then you would reapply. Or if you, you know, do not have interest in continuing service on the commission, then um, you know, we'll open it up for other um, applicants at that point. Okay, so we thought we would like to um, talk to individual commissioners before. Uh, you know, in the fall, September or whatever, to see how we're feeling, to see if we're committed or if they need to put our seat up for um, uh, applications and that kind of thing. You know, do a you're in kind of a check-in before the end of the year um, because it's really hard, as Linda knows, uh when those applications go out then they have to schedule uh interviews and it requires some um, a couple three i guess three uh council and you have to fit everybody's schedule in and it was just really hairy to do around christmas so it really needs to happen earlier to get all the commissions on the same schedule because that means the council is not just going to be doing our commission, they're going to be doing others as well. So that's what this particular, the importance of this particular thing now is, is it's, it's really, um, uh, we all have our appointed amount of time and the way it's stated here is correct. So we're going to move on to the next paragraph. Um, I got out of order here when I was talking. According to residency requirements. Residency requirements, um, Tyler, according to the ordinance number 2018-23, the council changed the wording to be uh, within the Oregon Trail School District. So we should probably stick with, uh, this is also the library district. I don't know if that it's the is same. In, I think it's inside of the Oregon Trail School District, but different boundaries change all the time. And since their terminology was the Oregon Trail School District. I think we should just have that in our. That's the largest boundary. We um, should have that in our bylaws. Okay. Hey, Jeff, do you want to make a note of that as well? Because the library district is referenced in the boards and commission policy as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, it references the Oregon Trail School mm -hmm. District as well as the library district. So probably just. Okay. Sure that yeah. so whichever is correct is okay with us. I just the only or the only thing I found was the ordinance that I mentioned 2018 23. I believe okay. the Sandy Library District, as well as the city of Sandy, 
are both incorporated into that larger entity of the Oregon Trail. So if you have Oregon Trail, that includes everything of the, the subset of Sandy and the mm -hmm. library district. Well, I'll just strike out Sandy Library District at this point. Okay, and so I think as far as our voting goes, I think we should vote to correct the statement according to the other uh, official documents to make it correct with those. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Appointment. Uh, it was edited down and it looks good. Compensation, uh, we're serving without salary. That looks fine. Resigning, it should be from the commission, not for the commission. Resigning yep. from the commission. So please correct the spelling there. Will do. Removal. Um, chapter 2.15.030 establishes that a member may be removed by the council for misconduct or non-performance of duty. Non-performance of duty will include among other items, attendance issues as outlined below. That looks good to me. Anybody? If I read something, and that, you're going to have to speak up. Attendance. Members of the commission are expected to attend 75% of all regularly scheduled meetings, workshops, special meetings and events. A member who is absent from two consecutive meetings without an excuse as approved by the respective board is presumed to be in non-performance of duty and the city council shall declare the position vacant and a new member shall be appointed as soon as feasibly possible. I would change that shall to may. They um, may, because otherwise it's a, it's a, you know, they have to do it. They shall, yeah. you know, who I knows? Think. It also says a feasibly popular, uh, possible instead of as feasibly popular. You need to oh. ask there, the word is yeah. as. Yep. I, I wonder did. if we want to include something that uh, includes people who are unable to serve, not because they're delinquent, be because something else is going on in their lives. I mean, we had this problem with Leah, where she felt sh like she had all her meetings that she missed, she felt like they were excused, and she's still angry about this. Um, um, and the problem was, even though they were excused, she was not able to perform her duty was, for months on end. Because I'm getting ready to do the attendance part of it, and that's below this, which addresses that. Okay, sorry. But um, we we're already on that. We're on that. We're on attendance. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, but there was something in here as I was reading it that wasn't. It says without an excuse as approved by the respective board. It is presumed to be in non performance. Okay, without an, we did in our previous um, thing, or maybe it's later in this, say that an excuse has to go to the chair and be presented to the chair for an excuse. Right. Leah kept so receiving excuses, just, but not by. Right, because of the 75% um, requirement, regardless of whether they're excused or not, you still have a 75% requirement. Yeah, the verbiage in, the verbiage in a few of these things is just like, come on, you know, <laughs> when you read it through, it's like it should be an as or an a or mm -hmm. extra the put in and I Tyler, think the whole section could be reworded and, and Tyler, do you have an opinion on um, About the word shall be removed. 
you know, as uh, Lin Linda mentioned, shall is very um, must. <laughs> shall and must are the same in, in city verbiage. So if you don't want it to be that strict and want to have some more flexibility there, we can absolutely change it. Um, if we use the term shall, then the intent would be if someone misses more than two consecutive meetings, they would be immediately removed, um, you know, at the next council meeting by the mayor and council. But they, but they do have the ability to get excused absences if they haven't already been absent a bunch of times and they're missing their 75% requirement, right? Correct. And so maybe what would be helpful is adding a secondary paragraph in here, just outlining what the excuse process looks like uh, to ensure that we don't run into another issue as we did previously with a commissioner uh, believing they had been excused when there was no record of that excuse ever having right. to. I think I, when we went through this before and changed the, this is like the original thing that we changed a lot. Um, yeah, and uh, we did have in there that to get an uh, an excuse, you had to send uh, the information to the commission chair. I would offer, uh, if I that. may, on the on the issue of the word "shall." Um, I think, legally speaking, um, the Arts Commission's bylaws can't actually make the council do something if you if you take what i my mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. so so the word shall in there actually doesn't really mean shall anyway because the council could choose not to so it should be may anyway i mean yeah. it's not like we may want to make it may just for the fact that it's not like it's real easy to replace someone if you remove them when they don't want to be removed when they're still willing to serve but for some reason have missed more than their <laughs> number of meetings you don't want to arbitrarily just remove them and make it you know mandatory because it's not an easy process to get them replaced okay can can i ask a question though um to the extent there's other commissions of the city do they have removal policies that uh might be informative in terms of this discussion and is the city at all concerned about having differences among the other commissioners? They're all the same as far as attendance. Same. And it's always been a may. The council's always had the right to, but doesn't have the obligation to remove someone for non attendance. It's usually a matter of kind of like a first warning, second warning, and if it continues, then they remove them. I think Jeff's suggestion makes a lot of sense that we could put may in there. It's Really up to the city council to decide anyway. Right. Yes. Who so, is the respective board in this context? Uh, the respective board. Commission, without excuse, um, approved by the commission. Change that to say um, excuse as approved by the commission chair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it was. Respective board. Uh, by the commission chair is how it was in our other. I think that's bylaws. how it should be. Should be by the chair. I do have one more thing to offer. I, okay. I was just that looking this up. Been made. Um, I apologize, I didn't bring it up before. Um, there's a reference in the preceding section and then also in the next one um, to uh, City Code Chapter 2, Section 15. Um, that, that's actually been repealed. So uh, it's, it no longer exists. So I would recommend removing any references to that chapter. Jeff, is that the one that was repealed and replaced with the policy? That's the one that's been repealed and replaced, although I, I, I know, Tyler, we've had a lot of conversations about this. That policy actually doesn't apply to the Arts Commission. Right. So I would just remove the reference entirely. I, I, was, going to, I was going to suggest that meetings and that whole uh two or so paragraphs could be removed um 
because you go to Article 5 and it starts talking about the meetings. So there's no point in having the meetings here and then Article 5 as well. So I believe Article 5 actually covers the, our meetings better. It's worded better. Let me just let me just read um, let me read out loud for those who don't have it. The first reference to meetings that we're talking about in that city code said as a, says it establishes that a majority of the commission's members shall constitute a quorum at the meeting. The commission may make and alter rules and regulations for its procedures consistent with the laws of the state and with the city charter and ordinances. The commission um, shall, or I guess shall meet at least once a month at a date, time and place to be established by the commission. Commission meetings shall be open to the public and written meeting minutes shall be maintained and made available to the public upon approval of the minutes by the commission. Meetings other than regularly scheduled times may be announced at a prior meeting and thereby be made part of the meeting's record. Uh, notice of previously unannounced meeting, notice of a previously unannounced meeting to the extent feasible provided to interested parties at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Okay, if you struck that whole thing, Article 5 says, the commission shall meet one day every calendar month at a time set in advance by the Arts Commission. If no business is scheduled for a monthly meeting, the commission may postpone to the following month. The public will be notified of all meetings of the Arts Commission. All meetings shall be open to the public and written meeting minutes shall be maintained and made available to the public upon approval of the minutes by the Commission. Art Commission meetings shall be held in a designated city facility. Special meetings may be called at any time by the chair or the chair in the chair's absence by the vice chair. Notice a special meeting shall be provided to each member at least 24 hours in advance. The notice shall specify the time and place of the special meeting. A quorum is required to conduct all business at meetings. You know, Beck, um, you're right. So that really covers the whole thing. So I'm saying, Cut out. why not? Yeah strike that first bunch of stuff that makes no sense really. All the stuff regarding meetings in Article 3 could be struck and just leave it as what it, as, as it appears in Article 5. Yep, I think that's a great suggestion. It's redundant okay. the way it is now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Lou for a moment, please. Yes. Hi, Lou. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly from the meeting itself and also I think reviewing some of the YouTube videos from the meetings, uh, I think that whole section was removed by us at the time. Yes, you're right. Was, uh, I remember the same exact discussion going the same way. Deja vu, <laughs> deja vu all over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really happy. I was very happy that I'd saved my 2018 notes for that very reason. Well, hopefully we can get a clean copy and then destroy all the old ones so <laughs> that there is no uh, <laughs> repetition that we have to go through this again in the future. Okay, great. Conflicts yeah, of interest. Conflicts of interest. Now, again, this is quoting chapter 2, 15. Uh, the section here is 0. 080 of the city charter states that no member of the board or commission shall have a financial interest directly or indirectly in any contract to which the city is a party. So Becky, so, I took the liberty just now to strike out the first, you know, several words so that that section starts with saying no member of a board or commission shall have um, 
But I think we clean it up even further by just saying no member of the Arts Commission shall have a financial interest. Yep. Etc. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. No member of a board or commission. And it doesn't need to be a board. So no member of the commission. No member of the commission. Yep. Okay. Next, unofficial members. Uh, this is a just in regard to pointing, appointing ad hoc committees, as we had been talking about. Uh, you don't have to be a, a commissioner to be on an ad hoc committee. They have a non-voting role. That section looks good to me. Moving on. I saw Article, that, Marcia. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me? I said I saw that, Marcia. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yawn so loudly because now your picture's big and mine is little. <laughs> okay, so Article 4, the officers. Uh, I looked at that section and it looks good. It looks to me like what we had passed previously. Did anybody else notice anything there that needed attention? Okay, so um, a presiding officer shall retain the full rights as a member of the Arts Commission to vote and deliberate on all issues um, coming before the Arts Commission and to propose and second motions. Uh, that's if you're the chair or vice chair, you still can uh, make motions and move to do things and you can second. All that looks regular to me. Um, Tyler noted in here that he's changing the term limit on this copy to reflect the January date. And that's intended so we don't need to come back and do the same thing again in a month or two. Um, okay, uh, then we got down to Article 5, which is the meeting uh, protocol that I mentioned before, and I'll just pick up where I left off on that after the quorum is required for the business. Um, the city council, the city of Sandy shall designate both a council and staff liaison for the city commission. Um, Robert rules of order shall govern the conduct of all commission regular meetings. Can we put regular meetings in there? Yes. We were never too bothered by Roberts. Because I don't want to do our work sessions or other meetings by Roberts rules. If we can say regular monthly meetings. Mm -hmm regular monthly meetings yeah i mean i also don't think there's anything wrong with striking that entire line and um you know just maybe adding a <laughs> a sentence something to the effect of you know the appropriate decorum will be observed observed what, in all meetings what does the okay what does uh okay pam yeah. and all the commissioners, I want you to just weigh in on what he said. Pam, start. Um, I, I think that leaves it nebulous as to what decorum should be, but I have no problem with, I have no problem with it if you don't think there's an issue there. I don't believe we reference Robert's rules in any other um, board bylaws. We always found that Robert's rules of orders were more off-putting to the public's uh, uh, willingness to participate, that they always felt like they maybe were going to say something wrong or do something wrong. And as long as um, members expressed uh, respect and um, uh, consideration for the other people and, you know, did not talk over each other or scream, um, uh, the Robert's rules of orders were not uh, an 
except for when Jim Duff was on the city council because he was like Mr. Roberts rules of order. But when it was just a regular council or a regular board meeting, um, Robert's rules are kind of more archaic as long as you respect yeah, the people yeah. at the meeting. It's off-putting to me. I'm, I'm glad to get that out of there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. Uh, Lou? Lou? Yes. How do you feel um, about it? <laughs> I think if we take out the Robert's rule for it would be okay, but I, I do think that uh, I agree with the others that there should be something in there about being respectful. Okay, so um, so how do we want to authorize in our voting so that Tyler can write a? Could you you could just put um, the chair shall enforce shall enforce um, proper decorum and respect and uh, consideration of the you know during the meeting yeah because you can you were the one the ultimate authority who says that's out of order i don't want to have that kind of exchange happening here okay. as long as it stays online it's kind of your your job to make sure it doesn't become can unruly. you write um something along the line that the chair or vice chair um should maintain decorum proper decorum and respect in the meeting? Yes. Okay. Let you give me just a moment. You can go ahead and keep moving on and I'll work on this sentence and we can circle back and just move. Okay, and make it final. <laughs> okay, so um, he's working on that, Jeff. So could I get you to um, make, write this down? Sure, go ahead. The, or the order of business we had um, decided that we would do the call to order and the roll call and we would move the minutes to the bottom before adjournment okay uh, then we would do the rest of the um, things except uh, i think we wanted the reason we wanted to do that is because if we had boring stuff to do and we had guests, we might like to do all the boring stuff at the end and allow the people who came to visit to get out before we do move, housekeeping. I would move the citizens' comments up to the first thing after after roll call. Yeah, and I think we did that too. We did. So yeah, so citizens' comments needs to be moved upward. Since we already did all this work, I'm still a little confused about where it all went well it's gone okay so all that was done with the previous liaison who's no longer with right that's what i thought well, it could be on a computer somewhere and we don't have it anymore so um okay so we have the, the call to order the roll call um we moved the citizens comments up and the approved minutes to the end and before adjournment. Okay, um, Article 6. So, Becky, can I interrupt you quickly? Mm -hmm. um, the sentence that I have in here now just says, the chair or vice, sh vice chair shall enforce proper decorum and respect during commission meetings. Is that? That's striking the Roberts Rules of Order sentence? And striking the Roberts Rules of Order sentence, yeah. That's good. It's good for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then as a matter of consistency um, between the council's agendas and the Arts Commission's agendas, instead of citizen comments, we'll title that public comment. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. And instead of approval of minutes, we'd relabel that consent agenda, which includes the minutes, right. uh, but it would be any other items that fall under just general consent yeah that's what we've been doing so actually okay. what you put out today is the way we prefer it that part of it uh, we we those those that terminology is what we're accustomed to perfect okay um article six talks about committees and uh one of the important things for linda and gail to hear is that 
that these committees are appointed by the chair and only three committee members can be uh, commissioners. So uh, any committee that we form, we would only have three commissioners and as many volunteer uh, co community members as we deem to have on a committee. It also says in here, it says, committees shall complete assigned tasks expeditiously and report findings in writing to the entire commission. I don't know that the report every time needs to be in writing, but I would rather say that and report to the findings in writing or orally as the chair requests or as or as laid out when the committee was formed because as determined in original yeah because some committees are not going to need yeah. written reports and other what i've tried to do after each mural was write up a written report on each one but that isn't because it's a committee i just think that some things require written reports and some things just need oral update right i agree so i i'm looking to tyler and jeff to especially Tyler, knowing how we're functioning, what do you think would be pro the best wording for the for our function? Um, you know, I think you could say something like, and report findings as directed by the chair, and just leave it general like that, yeah. whether that's okay. directed at the start of the project or whether that's directed <laughs> midway through. Um, I agree with Tyler, just as directed by chair. Sounds good. Okay. Any any dissent on that? Nope. Okay, you got company, Marcia. I know. <laughs> uh, okay, and then no ad hoc committee has the power to commit the Arts Commission to an endorsement of any action, plan, or program without submission to the body of the Arts Commission. So that's the end of that section. And the only thing I'm going to say as a housekeeping thing is from time to time, it's said art commission. And sometimes it's arts commission and arts commission is how it's written. So where the S is left off in some of those places, if you think of it, just add the S to it. Back in the meetings section, it was art commission. I'll go yeah. through one more yeah. time and make sure there is an S. That is the way that it was adopted in the municipal code. Yeah. I believe. Thank you. I see okay. You. Yeah. Um, our duty is to submit an annual re uh, report on an annual basis. That's the same. That's what we expected. Um, that's the same. Develop ideas, projects which will increase and enhance the art presence in Sandy. Um, that's one of our duties. Um, okay, and the last uh, article here, uh, Article 7, Conduct. Members of the commission who have a direct or indirect interest in or who would benefit from a matter of business shall disclose this interest. And if the commission decides this interest is inappropriate or violates the law or city policy or ordinance, the member must refrain from participating and voting on the matter. Um, conflict of interest. <laughs> Conflict of interest, was that not? That was already discussed earlier. This seems redundant. Yeah. Conflict of interest, there is a uh, conflict of interest statement earlier. 
It says no member of the commission shall have a financial interest either directly or indirectly in any contract to which the city is a party. So can we just eliminate that whole paragraph? So the conduct really is not so much a conf, this is a conflict of interest statement that could be removed. Mm -hmm. So that first paragraph could be removed. Correct. Okay, and then further in conduct. Members of the Arts Commission have a right to express personal views and opinions pursuant to our constitutional guarantees of freedom of speech. Members of the Arts Commission are free to voice a position, oral or written, on any issue if it's made clear that the member is not speaking as a presentative of the city or as a member of the Arts Commission. Now, a presentative is an archaic legalese word, which is correct, maybe, but re a, speaking as a rep Resentative would be a more clear word. Yes. To, to Absolutely. Use yeah. And last, these bylaws may be revised or amended at any regular meeting by the majority vote. Uh, it, it, and it lays out. Uh, that that's just a real boilerplate thing and it looks fine to me so yep. I, I don't I think this is the way we adopted it before and that brings to a close the uh, discussion unless you have something else to add on minutes is there anything anybody wants to add on this subject could we, since we did make a few changes, just move the approval of these changes to the next meeting when we'll have the copy actually written out in adoption form that we could just put under under the consent agenda next time? We, we could uh, do it that way. The only uh, thing I would say is we would need to weigh the fact that whatever's on the website is not right. And if we're asking new commissioners to join, we should be furnishing up front with the information provided a clear set of bylaws. So we have a, we have a, what do you call that? Application period open right now. So if we wait, then we are not going to have a clear, good set of bylaws to be putting out to the public. Judging from my past experience, um, the next meeting's a month away. If the application is open right now and we currently don't have any applicants, I don't think there's going to be much movement on it before our next meeting, when, especially when you have when to get three counselors together to do a, an interview. The application period is down here and open through May. It closes on May 8th, the application period. So we okay. won't have a meeting until well after that. Okay. So if I if there is enough people who would like to vote on these and get it cleared up, then um, someone sure. should move to do so. I move that we approve the changes that has made. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. Because it also, the very last thing saying that we can change this at any meeting with the approval of a quorum of the council. So if for some reason something comes out different than what we all thought when we were making these time by time changes, uh -huh. we can change it at any meeting, so. I agree. I agree. I second that. Do we have a second? Thank you. Pam seconded. Okay, so um, I'll do the roll call vote this time. Uh, Pam? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Lou? Yes. And Linda? Yes. And Becky votes yes. 
and Marcia. Marcia, where did Marcia yeah. picture? <laughs> yes. She's down oh. in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bad Sandy. <laughs> okay. Do we freeze? I think Becky's frozen. Uh oh. Becky. Hey. Ooh, Becky. Becky. He is very frozen, isn't she? Yep. <laughs> he did warn us that this could possibly happen. Um, Sometimes her internet goes out, apparently. Well, the, yeah. mo the, the motion passes. Regardless. Yes, it does. Passed, it yeah. Carry on. Um, let's give her just a second to see if she can get back on. Who is the vice chair, just out of curiosity? It's Marcia. OK. Do you think we could go on to the next part? or Because she's going to excuse herself for a minute. Well, she can't. Yeah, right. She's part of it so she can't recuse yeah. she can't vote on it anyway so right well let's move on yeah time is okay. a sense here yeah i got i got to get up to my sewing room so this is <laughs> yeah uh, so we're on to the growing together mural and it's um Becky's proposal as the artist did everyone have a chance to read through on it yeah, yeah it's Except great actually PM. yeah that was a great well, proposal. No, no. Pam, you probably have seen it all. Um, I actually edited it and helped her rewrite it, so I'm pretty familiar. Good. So you, you know, you know. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think she's got it pretty well laid out here. Um, she's got her fundraising and finances. I think that's pretty well laid out too, and how much it's going to cost. Um, basically we need to just okay that we can move forward with this and get a vote on it. Um, any questions on it? Then we could discuss it. I think it's a great proposal. I hope the council uh, endorses it and moves forward. Right. Yeah, I agree. Okay, shall we just do a vote on it now? Are you guys yeah, sure. good for it? Mm -hmm. okay. Can I get a motion to accept it? I'll um, move to accept it. I second. Okay. All in favor? Roll call. So we'll do roll call, and that's Blue. Yes. Uh, Sandy? Yes. Marcia's yes. Um, Pam? Yes. And Linda? Yes. Okay. So it okay. passes. Catch who made the motion and who seconded the motion. Could you repeat that for me? Who passed? Who? I seconded. I think I made the motion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Just wanted to make so, sure I have it's correct. <laughs> we'll just be submitting that then to the council for their okay. So I, I will briefly um, not change the subject, but expand on this a little bit. Yes. Is, um, is the interest of the commission to have Councillor Exner discuss this as your council liaison. Um, does a commission member want to bring this forward and have a discussion at um, a council meeting to discuss the proposal? How would you like to move this forward to the council? And Jeff, I guess I posed that question to you as well if you have any input. I'm sorry, I just got off the phone with, with Becky. Can you repeat that? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so the commission uh, opted to move this um, mural proposal to council. And the question that I posed back to the commission was, how would you like to go about that? Either having the council liaison present it to the council as a whole, a commissioned member bringing it to the council and having that discussion, um, a different suggestion or... Uh, I would think maybe Pamela, since she helped um, rewrite it and, and is real, probably the most familiar because she helped Becky with it, she would be the one to present it most effectively to the council. That would be fine. I'd be willing to do that. I mean, I think that would be fine, Tom. Okay. So Jeff, we just need to figure out um, uh, what council meeting we can get that pushed forward. Okay. Um. We don't have the schedule in front of me right now, so. Um. 
perhaps you and Pamela can um, briefly chat either at the end of the meeting or another time to get that scheduled. We can absolutely do that. And then also, by the way, we should chat anyway, uh, because um, I think I was able to speak with someone at IT about your about your email. Okay, account. So, so should we just hang out here after everybody else signs off? That's fine. Okay. Okay. So I, the next item is the consent agenda. Correct. <laughs> So someone who is actually part of that meeting should uh, uh, move to approve the minutes or to approve the consent agenda. Yeah, I think I would move to uh, consent the agenda. This is Marcia. <clears throat> this is Lou Wall second that. So we'll do a roll call again, or do we not have to? Yeah, do a roll call though, please. Uh, do you want to do that, Marsha, or do you want to? Okay, I'll do it. Lou, do you? Lou, yes. do you go? And yes. Sandy? Andy? Yes. And Marsha's yes, and Pamela? Yes. Linda, I don't know, if, I don't think you'd I wasn't at the meeting, so I would have to pretty much excuse you know, yourself. Saying, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so it sounds like it was carried. Great. So, adjourned. So we do have a liaison report. If you want me to briefly deliver that, and then we can move to adjournment. Um, we already briefly touched on a couple of these items. The uh, open commission seat is currently being, being recruited for. That was published in the Sandy Post today and will run um, for two more weeks following today's paper. It's also on the city's Facebook page. So I encourage you all to um, share and inform that to anyone who may be interested. Um, it'll close at 5 p.m. on May 8th, at which point I will uh, inform the commission how many applicants we've had and we'll begin to look at scheduling interviews with some council members as well as the chair. Um, Becky what happens asked, if you have no further applicants? Well, I have one applicant so far, so we'll at least have one. <laughs> um, right. You know, if we if we don't get any more, we can look at the one applicant we've had and can either you know, interview and decide yay or nay, or we can just ultimately push out the closing date. And, and is that a secret who the to. applicant is? Um, it is not, but I don't have that in front of me right now. Um, but I can, f I can forward the information to the commission uh, once we wrap up here. Is Gail on the on the list, or what is her? Gail, at this situation? well, I'll let Gail speak for herself. Gail, are you still there? No, I think um, Gail's Gail, left the meeting. Okay, Gail had told me that she was not wanting to be an applicant at this time, but she was willing to help us on a couple of committees. Oh, okay. Okay, wonderful. Um, and then we already touched on the term date updates that will be taking place in the upcoming right. uh, weeks. So I won't, won't bore you with that again. Um, final update I have, Becky had also asked for a budget update. So as you may recall, the total budget for the commission for the um, current biennium was $8,000. The commission currently has just over $7,000 remaining. However, there are some pending expenses that have not been reimbursed or paid to date, um, which include some of uh, Becky's reimbursables for the mural restoration, um, as well as the publishing um, of the, the recruitment notice in the and city. And ninety dollars for Sandra. So, and ninety dollars for Sandra as well. I'll bring so, that over. Uh, you know, at, at the end of that, just doing some quick mental math, we're probably looking at about sixty-six to sixty-seven hundred dollars remaining in that um, in that budget for the rest and of the. 
And that carries over? Um, indirectly, yes. I mean, it, yeah, that's the short answer is yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Anything else that anyone needs to add or would like to discuss at this point? Is Becky coming back on or are we? It looks like she's attempting to. Oh. But she has not yet connected. Well, that's too bad. Okay. Well, we can adjourn. Yeah, I think we can just go ahead and adjourn and. Um, you can let can her know. We're gone. Yeah. And Tyler, uh, can you stick around for a sec with, with uh, Pamela and myself? Okay. Yeah. The rest of us can. See you next time. <laughs> Thank, okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye. <laughs> Leave the meeting. Come. <laughs> Well, so uh, Pam, the first thing I'll say is that I, I messaged um, Jeff Loader over in IT during the meeting, um, letting him know that you were having that problem. And so he said it was okay for me to give you his direct phone number. Okay, great. So feel free to give him a call and he can walk you through it. Okay. So, that, so that's that. I, I sent you an email. Um, you sent it to my personal email. To your personal, to your personal. Okay. Yes, thank you. I know, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I kept getting that notice like everybody else did constantly that you need to do the two-factor identification. I tried to do that several times and I, I, it messed up my regular email and I just screwed up and it didn't work. And so I just got frustrated and then I haven't been looking at my email very much recently because for obvious reasons and, mm -hmm. um, and so then it, during that period of time, it just chucked me. Oh, I, I understand. Other people have had problems too. So, okay. Um, in terms of the mural, uh, one thing I wanted to ask was, um, so, and Tyler, this is where you could weigh in too. It's, is this something that requires like council action, like they need to approve an expenditure, or what are we, what are we talking about? Um, do you want to speak to that, Pamela, or do you want me to jump off? Oh. Oh, go ahead if you know the answer. Well, my understanding, um, as as the proposal is currently presented, would be um, some commitment of of council. Um, Becky had mentioned previously that the goal would be to try to raise funds, um, you know, from private donations. Um, Becky's back. Hi, Becky. Hey, hey Becky. Becky. <laughs> Out here uh, in the sticks. <laughs> that some private donations could be solicited first to try to help offset that cost, but right. ultimately um, it will require some uh, contribution from the council. Ideally, a motion um, you know, being passed to approve up to X dollars um, so that if we got you know, $5,000 in donations, then it would just automatically offset you know, the, the um, total project cost as approved by council. Okay, and the, the reason I was asking is that I had, it was actually on our radar as something, somebody put it on there, um, not me, in terms of our, our future agenda items. We have kind of a running list for the city council. So anyway, it was on there for the May 4th meeting, but it was under the, the work session category. But it sounds like it would need to be a regular business item if we're talking about approving an expenditure. Yeah, so that May 4th meeting, um, there was originally kind of two parts to this. Uh, one was the Thomas mural rededication, which um, likely can't happen because we're not having anything in person presently. Mm -hmm. And so originally, and Becky jump in here if I'm misunderstanding, but I think the intent was to do it during the workshop so that council could one, see the mural um, that's been reinstalled and, and um, uh, I can't think of the right word, revitalized, for lack of a better term, uh, restored. That's restored, what I was trying yeah. to say. <laughs> um, they could go upstairs, see the restored mural, walk across the street and have a brief sort of viewing of here's the site of the proposed mural, here's kind of what it would look like and give council a sense of where it's going and what it looks like. There would still need to be then the other piece of council actually in a formal meeting um, 
you know, making some sort of motion to approve okay. the expense. So I understand you guys uh, stopped the meeting or yeah, adjourned? the meeting is adjourned. The meeting is adjourned. Yeah. Okay. And you didn't vote on this. Tyler, I was on the phone. There, was, part. Was, there... there was a vote to pass this on okay. or forward this on to so, council. Yes. Um, to, to clarify what it is, this proposal then goes to the city council and it's our job as a commission to forward our projects that we think that city might like to do to them and then they would vote to take it on or not and then they would task city staff with follow-through for instance in the case of this it's going to require a lawyer, the city lawyer, uh, doing contracts and someone in the city, or they may want, uh, they may kick it back and say, we want you to get the bids, for instance, or we want, we want the uh, Arts Commission to do X, Y, and Z of this part of this project. So it could go either way. It's up to you know we're forwarding the idea we're forwarding the project but it's up to the city council to decide where it goes from there now of the money what i had suggested before was that perhaps the council could vote to fund it out of urban renewal funds but i don't want it 100 percent funded out of urban renewal funds because i want it to be a community building project which means community involvement and so there are aspects of it in the proposal where people could uh, buy a flower like buy a brick for a plaza or whatever uh, by promoting um, people people's involvement in the community it is more of a community building project. So whatever funds are raised from private funds then would offset what the urban renewal money would be. Right, okay. So it sounds like this you know, makes sense to be on the, the May 4th regular business agenda for the, for the council. And yeah. does it have to be a commissioner presenting this? Is that why you asked me to do it? Because Becky can't, because she has to recuse herself. Is that the deal? So, I'll oh, go ahead, Jeff. No, I, I think it would be appropriate for it for it not to be Becky in terms of you know it somebody speaking for the for the commission okay. who doesn't have a direct interest in it. So yeah, that, I think that's why it would be appropriate. Okay. Yeah, I'm very willing to do that. I just wanted to understand. Uh, the other thing too is I can speak as the artist. Yeah, of course. At the meeting. Sure and go from the artist's point of view, but I cannot speak from the commission's point of view because I have an interest in it, right. even though I do not have a financial interest in it uh -huh. because I'm donating the money, but technically um, the, the city will have a contract with me, even though um, I'm not getting anything, I'm not getting money out of it. Okay. Is that right. clear? No, thank you for that clarification. That's good. So I imagine a situation where uh, where Pam, maybe you speak first, um, and then Becky, you could be there. Also, maybe you'll speak a little bit or field questions, that that mm -hmm. sort of a thing. But but the main the main thrust of the of the presentation is from is from Pam. As far okay. as the details of the the art of it, would that better come from Becky, or do you? I mean, I can. I can talk about the whole thing. I, I'm, I'm wondering how you want to divide this up. What do you think is most appropriate that I address and what Becky should address? I mean, I uh, and Tyler, feel free to, to step in if you probably know more about it than I do. But yeah, I imagine a situation where, where Pam, you're sort of describing the overall project and you're introducing it and you're saying this, this, is, this is the scope of it. This is how it's going to work. And then you turn it over to Becky to talk about some of the some of the details, or even just to field questions that the council may have. But certainly, you would yeah, start with giving an overall overview of the project, and yeah. and, uh, and of what the request is of the council. 
Okay, Becky fielding questions would be a good, good plan. Yeah. Okay. So the way the proposal is laid out is it has the vision of what we're trying to accomplish in the, in the first part of the uh, proposal. And so to me, that is what the Sandy Arts Commission is trying to uh, get the city council to support and work together on that. The artist's vision statement on page two is where I think I would come in and I would um, talk about that vision the artist's vision and then the fundraising and fund it is back to the um, arts commission but also um, if our liaison were there which are you still going to be out then tyler oops tyler i'm You're muted here. sorry yeah. um, it depends i do not know yet when i am returning Okay, so um, as far as the finance and the fundraising and things like that go, it could be either Pam or the liaison uh, staff member report. Um, timeline, and they will have they will have this to read, but I know that people sometimes don't read everything, so um, a lot of the the last second half of it could be question and answer and we did take this project to the public forum and we also took it to the thing that the city councilman did in the uh, community center where they opened had a public meeting and so some of the counselors have are already familiar with the general concept and so having the picture there, the photograph on the big screen is important so that we can talk about that. Yeah, I think Jeff, the only um, sort of other caveat to keep in mind is that we would need to convene the Urban Renewal Agency Board and I don't know what um, Chief Schneider or um, Chamber Director Chris's schedule is currently if May 4th works for them or if it would need to be the second meeting in May. Good point, Tyler. Okay, so we'll get back to you on that. Um, let's let's pencil it in for the fourth. Um, and if for some reason that doesn't work, we will circle back with you. Okay. Is there an amount of time we should not go beyond? <laughs> what do you think, Tyler? Um, you know, I would say 15 minutes is probably a comfortable um, okay. amount of time, you know, speaking candidly, keeping counsel's interest and um, on task is important, especially with items like this, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to sell it short, but you don't want to get too far in the weeds and have, you know, questions about like what types of bolts are being used when really that's not the intent of of the proposal right so right okay well and i think i think that the if we stick to the script of the proposal that we should be able to get it all in yeah i think um you know the q a usually ends up being the most useful um so, i mean certainly you want to provide the overview um but like you know get making sure you have some time for q a i think is helpful for the council as well yeah, absolutely and and the the end of this is minutia that is uh other considerations metal fabrication installation and all that mm -hmm. even even how the the numbers are broken down just for their purposes knowing the price range is probably and they if they want uh, to ask questions and they'll be able to. But yeah. for me, the the upfront part of it is where from uh, the standpoint of the urban renewal people, we're hitting in this proposal, we're hitting the public safety issue because that there is a bad spot there 
where this mural is going, that um, low old abandoned loading dock could actually be a public health or safety issue. And we're also hoping to get people to come and stop and be interested in this as a piece of art and uh, which could help the economic uh, value of the city, which is a chamber perk. So I think, um, I, I think that there's a little something in here for everybody on the urban renewal board. I think the one other, um, and I don't have the proposal in front of me now since I've closed out of the agenda, but um, the one other thing I would urge is you know, really discovering or detailing what the not to exceed dollar amount of the project would be because that's how typically the urban renewal agency board or the council adopts um, contracts. It's, you know, contract X, Y, and Z not to exceed 25,000 or something like that. So they're, they'll want to see the detail, but they're also going to want to know exactly, you know, how much there would be on the hook for um, okay. so being concise about what that actual, you know, financial impact is, is going to be important. So I would say, um, you know, Becky and Pam, if you guys can, you know, feel free to confer between yourselves, you know, ahead of time with you know how you want to speak or how you want to you know i mean i we have the proposal right so you don't need to write up a new report or anything like that um does it have i don't have it in front of me at the moment either does it have whatever visuals we, we might need is that's already ready to go i yeah i thought i sent it in with this but if i didn't i'll make sure that um I, i'll just resend it anyway i'll send it to you jeff okay i mean this meeting I'm virtually certain will be, you know, online, just like this one. Um, so we can screen share those things if we need to while you're speaking. Yeah, we can, I, we can it have would, it pop up. Yeah. yeah, it would be helpful to have that on screen. That's uh, no problem. Yeah, I can help. The artist's that. vision is visual, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I was just, yeah, but feel free to, you know, you guys can certainly speak about how you want to coordinate some of the stuff that you're you're both going to talk about all right <laughs> thank uh -huh. you all yeah it's okay. like thank a little tyler me. there tyler jr this is my mini me hi <laughs> hi hi are you being shy can you say hi uh, wave hey buddy hi hi <laughs> camera Oops, I can't even find the camera to wave at it. He um, looks so much like you, Tyler. It's insane. He does. Wow. I still, I didn't believe it until like two weeks ago. I found some of my old baby pictures and I'm like, holy yeah. crap, that is me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just so the next one doesn't look like you. Yeah, we don't want a little girl looking like this. That's <laughs> <laughs> we'll know on Saturday. Yeah. Oh boy. Wow. Date yeah. certain, That's huh? That's exciting. Yes, date certain. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck with all that. Thank you very much. And thank you for um, sticking through the whole thing. And thank you, Jeff, for everything. Thank you both. Yes. Sure thing. Yep. You can see that we're just not that techy. <laughs> you guys did very well. It was it ran pretty smoothly. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Jeff, are you staying on for a second? Let me give you a quick call. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Tyler. All right, thanks everyone.